welcome to my channel A Woman in Physics in 2020. I hope you had a great holiday season and as we're saying in Germany, you had a good slide into the new year. This is the first episode that I'm going to upload in this new year and it's actually the ninth episode on this exercise series introduction to physics. So welcome to this episode in which we will focus on the mechanics of liquids. Basically we are going to talk about pressure and liquids. So without further ado let's focus on today's topic. A U-tube with a cross-sectional area of A equals 3 cm squared which is open on both sides, is half filled with water. Subsequently, 100 cm cubed oil are added on one side and 50 cm cubed on the other side. The resulting height difference is measured as H equals 3.5 cm. What density does the oil have? So, what can we take out of the text? We have some given variables and values. We know that the cross-sectional area A is 3 cm squared. And we do know that we have in both columns of the YouTube different amounts of oil. V1 equals 100 cm cubed and V2 equals 50 cm cubed. Finally, we have measured the height difference according to the text as 3.5 cm. And we are searching for the density rho of the oil. So how do we approach this task? Let's make a little sketch. You can see here on the left hand side a U-tube that is open on both sides and we have filled some water into the tube. And it's apparently in equilibrium, which means that it's not moving and the water level on the left hand side and on the right hand side are identical. Now we are going to add some oil. On the left hand side we are going to add the volume V1 and on the right hand side V2. As a result you can see that there are different levels now. How can we from this calculate the density of the oil. We do know that the gravitational force of a liquid column, of any liquid column, can always be calculated as G equals M times G. M is the mass of the respective column and the small g is the gravitational constant, which we know for calculational purposes it's 9.81 meters per second squared. However, if the mass m is not given, we can still calculate it from the density of the respective liquid rho and its volume v. And in case the volume is not given, we can go ahead and substitute the volume v by cross-sectional area a multiplied with height h. Does this help us? Yes, it does. Because we are talking about a system that's in equilibrium. Again, it means that our liquids are not moving. In this case, it means that the left and the right side of our YouTube, the left and right column, are in equilibrium. What does this mean with respect to our sketch that we've made? Let's go back. We've seen here the different volumes of the oil and the water below. Now, if we go ahead and pick a line, basically we could pick any line, but maybe it makes sense to pick this particular dashed line as shown here. Then we know on the left hand side we have the volume of the oil V1 and on the right hand side we have the oil V2 and some additional water of volume V3. And we know that an equilibrium in this case means that the total sum of the gravitational forces of the liquids 
or in this case of the liquid oil on the left hand side above the dashed line and the sum on the right hand side above the dashed line are identical. So let's put it all down. It means that density oil multiplied with volume V1 multiplied with gravitational constant G equals rho oil multiplied with V2 and G plus the density of water multiplied with the respective volume of the water V3 multiplied with G. And this is really nice because first of all we can divide the whole equation by G. We do not need the gravitational constant at all. And then we can put the density of oil that we are looking for on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side. And we get that the density rho oil equals density of water multiplied with the volume of the water V3, all of it divided by V1 minus V2. And this is really nice because out of the measured data, if all the four variables on the right hand side are given, we can simply calculate the density of oil. But are they given? If we think back then, yes, V1 and V2 were given. What about the density of water? Well, this one wasn't given, but it's not that complicated because it's a constant. Density of normal water is always one gram per centimeters cubed. The only unknown variable on the right hand side is the volume of the water. Now, where do we get this from? So let's go back to our sketch. And we've seen in this sketch that we can draw such a dashed line where the volume of the water V3 was introduced. But still, how can we calculate it? Well, let's think back for a moment to the point where I said that if we do not know the volume of such a liquid column, we can always substitute it by the product of cross-sectional area and height. And if we do this, considering that it's apparently a YouTube and we didn't give any, you know, special meaning saying that the different columns had different sizes. So we can assume reasonably that they have the same cross-sectional area. Then we can substitute the volumes by the heights. We have on the left hand side the height H1 and on the right hand side H2 for the oil, H3 for the water, and we see even the height difference that we haven't been using yet. So basically we can write down the height on the left hand side H1 equals height H2 plus H3 plus delta H. And we wanted to know something about the water on the right hand side, right? So let's rewrite this equation. H3 equals H1 minus H2 minus delta H. And since we didn't want knowledge about the height H but the volume, we can go back from the height to the volume by introducing again the cross-sectional area and we can do it in this way. Every time we see this height with an index of 1, 2 or 3, we can substitute it by volume respective volume, of course, divided by the cross-sectional area A. And as a result, we get that the volume V3 that we didn't have equals V1 minus V2 minus cross-sectional area A multiplied with the height difference delta H. And if we use this equation in our basically final equation for calculating the density of the oil, we are getting an equation that contains on the right hand side only known variables. So we can take our values and put them inside here, right? But wait, in this particular case, if we go back for a second, we can see here that this time compared to any other exercise we've done, we haven't been recalculating our given values to the basic units. Usually I've been saying that, oh, please do it in order to not 
think about it later or forget about it later. No, we haven't been doing it. Is this horrible? No. In this particular case, actually, it's good that we didn't do it. We could have done it, but we didn't need to because if we go back to our solution, we see here that if we put all values, including the units, into the equation, we notice that on the right-hand side, centimeters cubed is really deleting itself. And all that's left of units on the right-hand side is actually gram per centimeters cubed, the perfect unit for a density. So we can take all our given values, put them into a calculator, and what we get is that in the present case, the density of oil equals 0.79 gram per centimeters cubed. So what is today's takeaway message? Basically, the value that we've just calculated with 0.79 gram per centimeters cubed is a realistic value for an oil. Hence, the density of oil is smaller than the density of water. Therefore, oil swims on top of water. And with this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention and I hope to see you soon for the next exercise. Bye!